Hi, I'm Paul Gilbert. Today we're talking about my book, Lead Like a General. Modern research on leadership is seen through the Civil War, and we're looking specifically at a chapter on George McClellan and the perfectionist dilemma. Um, chapter three is on General George McClellan, who is it's just so much fun to dislike this guy. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's an interesting guy. I think, to be fair to him, he is, he, every organization should have a McClellan. They just shouldn't have a McClellan as their leader. Um, because he was very smart, very competent. He was a, a perfect administrator. I mean, he really organized things beautifully well. This is, uh, this is McClellan. And um, on November 1, 1861, McClellan was given a dual role of being general in chief in charge of all Union forces, as well as um, the commander of the Army of the Potomac, which was the army that uh, was in the D.C., Virginia, Maryland area. And he told President Lincoln, I can do it all. And, uh, and, and he did a lot of things, but he was not able to take initiative this was one of the first things that was a political embarrassment to him. This is a what they call a Quaker gun. It's a it's a log painted black, and from any distance, as you're looking through your binoculars or spyglasses, it looks like this is a fort brimming with cannons. Well, the Confederates, after the first battle of, of Manassas, had pushed well into Arlington, and then they withdrew. So at Upton Hill, which happens to be a fantastic regional park, and you should go to the Great Water Park. Um, they built a fort and they put these um, Quaker guns into it. And it took McClellan weeks to kind of sneak up on these, on these wooden guns. And when Congress found out about it, they were very chagrined about the whole thing. And then he proceeded to sneak up on Chantilly and it had Quaker guns, and then sneak up on Manassas and it had Quaker guns. And it sort of um, got to why he wasn't a, a great leader. He was very hyper-cautious, he was always overestimating his, his opposition. And the modern um, research piece of it is the Herman Whole Brain Model. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but most people know about right brain, left brain. This breaks it down into four quadrants of the brain. And it, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a wonderful way to think about individual personality types. You know, Myers-Briggs is a good way, there's a number of them out there. But this is one that is based on brain imaging. And they've done brain imaging on people with different um, sort of personality types and done correlations so they can figure out it's actually a different part of the brain that's firing when you're, when you're focusing on different kinds of issues. And McClellan was, was someone who had a, a real dominance in thinking in the, in the lower left quadrant, which is organized, sequential, planning, detailed. Some other words that go in there are controlling. And uh, they, people who have a high um, proficiency in this area often are rather fearful because they, they have a need to control all the details. And of course, no one can control details. So it, it creates fear that you're going to lose control. Um, people over here, this is, um, this is the, the lower right. These are very interpersonal people. They're, they're, they're people people. They're emotional. They, they connect with others very well. These folks are very analytical and logical and, um, and highly logical. Oh, I was so logical. And these people over here are holistic, strategic, intuitive, big picture thinkers. And it was kind of interesting because at the time that, that McClellan was over here, Lee is very much over here. He was not a detailed person at all. He had a team that helped him do that. But he was very good at taking all the pieces of the puzzle and seeing the strategic uh, move that could be made. And that's one that you sometimes have to take a step away from the sequence.